Good morning, Jefferson friends. Uh, welcome on this Sunday morning when we uh, continue to celebrate uh, the resurrection and look toward that glorious day of Pentecost, just a few weeks away when the Holy Spirit will be poured out on all God's people, when the church uh, would be born. Um, I really enjoy this season of the year. Um, seeing a time when the disciples were going through such a tremendous change, when they were experiencing for themselves a new normal, and it takes on a whole new meaning this year as we're all experiencing a new normal. My message today is called The Breath of Life, and I'd like to share the scriptures for this morning. But both from the Gospel of John, the first John 14, verses 25 through 27, and then the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 19 through 22. Listen, this is God's word for you and me today. All this I've spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. An appropriate message for today. And then John 20. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, thank you for this message that reminds us that not everything that you're doing is obvious all the time, that you prepare us in very special ways and unexpected ways. But Lord, you are always moving us toward the goal of being all we are called to be and all you created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wonder if we took some time and thought about all of the most memorable days in our lives, and then asked ourselves the question, did we see them when they happened, or did some of them surprise us? The day uh, you got your driver's license uh, probably was a big day when you were a teenager. Or how about uh, your first car? Or uh, the day you met the person you'd spend your life with, but you didn't know it at the time? Or the day she said yes, much to your enthusiasm and excitement. Or the day you were going, you found out you were going to be a father or a mother. The day your first child was born. Uh, the day you got accepted to college or the day you graduated. The day you got your first job. <laughs> the day you got your dream job. The day you had your biggest success. The day you found out that failure isn't fatal. Maybe the day you met Jesus. Or the day you found out that he would never leave you. There's all kinds of occasions in our lives that have tremendous impact on them, but we may or may not have realized it when they happened. I mean, sometimes you notice them. I remember uh, my graduation day from Valley Forge Military Academy. I thought I was on top of the world. I graduated at the top of my class. I drove away from graduation in my dad's 1963 T-Bird. I had a lovely uh, girlfriend from Ephrata, Pennsylvania. I was uh, headed for uh, Allegheny College on a scholarship, and uh, I had a summer job that paid uh, 20 bucks an hour in uh, 19. 66 uh, at JNL Steel. I thought I was on top of the world. Um, <laughs> but there's lots of days in my life that were important that I didn't realize at the time. And I think today's scripture talks about one of those days 
in the lives of those disciples. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. I wonder if any of them were scratching their heads and said, What the heck does that mean? Hmm. I mean, why is it here? It seems like a parenthesis, an add-on. It's tucked in between the miracle of Easter and uh, Thomas' great affirmation of the Lordship of Christ. I mean, what difference did it make that he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit? Hmm. Well, first of all, I want you to understand that the word spirit is uh, an interesting play on words. And when he says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, that the words for breathed on or breath and spirit are the same word. In Hebrew, the word is ruach, and it means wind or breath or spirit. In Latin, it's spiritus. It means the same thing, wind or breath or spirit. Uh, even in our English, uh, we wonder uh, wh where does that uh, similarity come? And uh, we realize that the word for Holy Ghost, for Holy Spirit, comes from the word gust. And gust, of course, is a movement of wind or breath. The Holy Spirit didn't just show up when Jesus said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, is everywhere in Scripture, mentioned uh, either explicitly or implicitly in every book in the Bible except Ruth and that little postcard to Philemon in the New Testament. The Spirit's everywhere, especially in the New Testament. Uh, the Spirit came, uh, and the angel Gabriel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will bear a child. The same angel came to Joseph and said, Don't be afraid to take her as your wife, for the child that is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Mary's cousin Elizabeth was touched by the Holy Spirit, and when at an old age she conceived uh, uh, the one we would come to know as John the Baptist by the power of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah was uh, touched by the Holy Spirit as he was prophesying and said that his name will be called John. So many times the Holy Spirit is mentioned again and again and again. After those years of Jesus' preparation, when um, all we hear about him between his birth and his baptism is his bar mitzvah, when he had a great uh, authority and wisdom from the Holy Spirit, but it's that baptism day when he came before John the Baptist and John said, uh, you should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, no, it should be this way. And uh, as he was baptized, it says the heavens opened and God spoke and the spirit descended on him like a dove. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You see, it was on that day that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are mentioned together in the scripture. And then the very first thing that happens like that after that is that it says that uh, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested. And then after that, Jesus continued his ministry filled with the Holy Spirit. I love the passage in Luke 4, which is really a recap of a prophecy in Isaiah 61. It's in Luke 4, verses 16 through 20. Jesus stood in the synagogue in Nazareth and unfolded the scroll of Isaiah and read the scripture of the day. And this is what he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's appointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he said, today, the scripture was fulfilled in your hearing. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus in power. You see, all of this was there. All of this was familiar to the disciples. But on that day when he said, receive the Holy Spirit, I don't think they realized what was coming. 
in the weeks ahead as we prepare for Pentecost, we're, we're going to see how Jesus tried to fill in the gaps for the disciples so they would understand, although they, never, they did not really understand until the day of Pentecost. But it is that ministry of the Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus and filled him that was poured out upon those disciples at Pentecost that they received on that day when he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, that changed everything. And so we're in the midst of change. We're in the midst of a time when it will certainly be one of the most memorable times in our lives, but we're not sure what it means yet. What will life be like after these weeks of social distancing and uh, stay-at-home orders? Uh, God is still moving. God is still acting. And God is still the one that breathed on us and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So I invite you to join with me as we continue this journey through Pentecost. May the Lord bless you as we're in the midst of a minute that we may not fully understand. But God is still in control. Jesus is still building his church. He still breathes on us and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is still working on us. I want to assure you of something. I have it on good authority because I've read to the end of the book and I know that Jesus wins. But I want you to assure you of something. The best is yet to come. Because Jesus is still Lord. And we are still his people. May God bless you uh, in this coming week and in the coming weeks as we walk together seeking to be God's people. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May you go with God's blessing. Amen and amen.